I truly believe the only crime committed was the, the potential political gain of Angela Corey. I don't, I don't think anyone committed a crime but her. He, he did nothing but try to protect the public, and she's trying to put the public in jail for her personal gain. I was born in January 1947. I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. I went to high school at Inglewood Senior High School. I graduated in 1966, went into the National Guard, and spent two years in the Florida National Guard. And then when I got out of there, I uh, decided to go into the service and make a career of it. My name's uh, Robert Dietrich. I'm a good friend of Mr. Ronald Thompson. Uh, I've known him for quite some time. You know, we, we met many years ago in uh, Ellisville, Florida, when he was volunteering for the um, Veterans Hospital there. He, he did all his volunteer work. He drove to Lake City every day from Keystone. He had an old 50 Chevrolet truck that caught my eye, and I had to stop by and introduce myself and look at that truck, and ended up, we got become friends, and our friendship grew till I consider him my best friend. I got involved with uh, a veterans organization called ANVETS here in Keystone. Ended up being a commander, but I set up a lot of fundraisers when the post first got started. And um, I built it up to what it is today. I started volunteering in Lake City at the VA hospital, taking care of hospital veterans and needy veterans. And I ended up with a job there that I worked five years and put in over 5,000 volunteer hours. And I was actually the chairman of all the veterans organizations that volunteered at that hospital. I did it because I care about the veterans while I was in the service that gave their lives and a lot of them were wounded and come home crippled. And I see veterans every day while I was working at the VA have to fight for care. And I finally realized with the Lord's help, the more I help people, the more I benefit from it, it bettered my life. I'm Pastor Gene Hodges of the First Baptist Church, West Jacksonville. I'm the pastor of Ronald Thompson, and he joined our church uh, several years ago. Ronald Thompson is a born-again Christian, and he's exemplified that in the way he responds to worshiping on a regular faithful basis. I think the Florida-Georgia football game was on that day. So I decided to go down to the neighborhood restaurant here in Keystone and have lunch. As I passed my neighbor's house, I noticed that she was home. And the incident down the street here came up that uh, where he was trying to just protect the, the elderly lady that was he was watching the property for. Ron was always a person to help a neighbor. He's, he's helped everybody ever, ever since I've known him. That's all he's ever done is help whoever he got to meet. And uh, he's known him five minutes for five years. <laughs> That's just Ron's way, you know. But uh, he was down there looking out for the place like he said he would. And uh, there was the incident where the, the young boys, uh, they were 17 or so, they came there, weren't supposed to be there, causing problems. And uh, they were well known in the neighborhood to be troublemakers. The one boy, I guess, had permission to get his clothes or something or take a shower and leave. But uh, the rest of them weren't supposed to be there, and Ron asked them to all to leave. And they, when they refused, he, of course, uh, he, he's just an old man. He had several older teenage boys that could, you know, I'm sure, beat him up in a minute if they wanted to. So he pulled his gun out, which he was allowed to carry, he had a permit for it. He said, please leave. And they still just ignored him. They didn't feel he was any kind of threat. So that's when he fired two rounds in the ground to scare them off because they were causing such a 
problem with the grandmother that she was becoming quite scared and, and the boy was, I guess, right into her face and screaming and yelling and carrying on. There was a total of four of them. They had trashed their, the inside of the trailers, wrote, wrote sayings on the walls, bad, bad stuff, and ate all the basic food that, that the rest of the family was going to be eating because he had been known already to push her down or hit her. And he was taking all the other three right in with him after she had told him, you can go in by yourself, take a shower, change clothes, and you have to leave immediately with your friends. But they cannot go in the house with you while you're in there bathing and changing clothes. I, th I think it's time for y'all to get in your vehicle and leave. You can't tell me a, go a goddamn thing, a and this is my house. And when they use God's name in vain, it got my attention. So I let them know that they weren't gonna do it, and that I'd stand my ground, and I did, by firing two rounds in the ground. That's when they called the police or the sheriff, and the sheriff came out, and you know that, that that's where Mr. Thompson was arrested. He went to uh, county jail, and they held him with such a high bond, none of us could, we all tried to scrape the money together to get him out on bond, we couldn't. There just wasn't that much money available. It was an insane amount. And then when he was finally uh, sentenced to the three years, then of course he lost all his benefits. You know, he, he did Social Security, his VA benefits, and his wife had absolutely no income to take care of things. And no harm was ever intended towards towards the uh, the boys there, this this, this seventeen year old boys, uh, which is really sad because those seven, same seventeen year old boys just within months after this were were known to be troublemakers, known to be rowdy, had been breaking into homes and, and stealing AC units and so forth, and they were incarcerated prior to Ron even being, <laughs> being sentenced. I got arrested for helping my neighbor and went straight to prison from there. And that started my prison life. and. <laughs> Uh, I had to deal with it. And his wife just kind of lost hope at that point, and she moved in with a friend of hers and, and just didn't want to be in the house no more. She, just, she, she was so depressed that when she moved out, she took her personal things and never even took her family photos off the wall. But I was called to the um, chaplain's office in prison, and he said that my wife had an accident she fell and she was paralyzed from the neck down. She authorized them to do surgery. And while they were doing the surgery, she passed away. I kind of took it kind of hard and... Uh... Ronald lost his wife while he was in prison and that had a great impact upon his life the inability for him to, of course, minister to the family, you know, with him in person. And uh, that affected him greatly. Wes, I want to thank you for taking the initiative uh, to do this and get this information out so others can be made aware of uh, what we're dealing with here, uh, not only in the state of Florida, but in our district. When he came home, his health, you know, he, he was legally blind. I mean, he did come home after the three years. He was legally blind. He, he, he had cancer in his jaw that was almost to his lymph nodes. He had had such improper care. And I thought I won. I was a free man again. And then after about a year, right out a year, started getting letters from county again saying to go before the judge. and found out that the state wanted to take me back to another trial. We just uh, pray that, uh, that this will uh, improve the process and create the awareness that people need to know that we need good, sound leadership in that position. And, uh, I feel our system's really failing us all the way around. 
like like Angela Corey's failed us as a as an, an attorney, state's attorney. She she should be after the career criminals, not a, a poor old man with health issues that was just trying to protect his neighbor. I think this entire ordeal uh, has taken its toll on Ronald's life, but I've known him to be a, a trooper and uh, an honest man, an honorable man. I'll guarantee you I'm gonna spend the rest of my life trying to change the justice system here in Florida. Because I was born and grew up, I'm a Floridian, but I hate to admit it anymore. But I love my country and my flag and my veterans and my God. <laughs>